finance committee together do you want to call your board yes i'll call the finance committee meeting to order uh, i as far as in attendance is myself amy fiden uh, paul benjamin and andy kopacki thank you we're um randy eiser molly keegan jane nevin smith joyce chunglo in person and amy parsons on remote all right linda would you like to start first you need to announce that the meeting a couple comments say again that the meeting is being oh. yes ask if it's being recorded by anyone else and announce it's being recorded by us thank you not here all right um this meeting is being recorded by hadley media and um, the select board via zoom is anyone else present recording this meeting Please note in the minutes that no one else is reporting the meeting. Thank, Thank you. You ready? Okay. You want to do public sure. comment? Or? I'm going no to be. public comments late. We ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, I am um, going to be uh, presenting the FY24 budget today with. Uh, this evening with Carolyn Brennan, who is on Zoom. So we'll have a little bit of a, a back and forth. And I haven't done this before, so I hope we can communicate okay this way, Carolyn. Yeah, um, we'll work it. I do have a um, PowerPoint that, which is basically going through the primary charts that are in the budget book. As you've noticed, you don't actually have the um, complete. Uh, budget book yet, but the, it is ready. There's just a couple of sections being proofed and some department heads still have to get back to me with a couple of details, but we should have all of that tomorrow. So, um, and then at that point, Jennifer does her terrific going through and making sure everything looks the way I think it is. Uh, it does. It's good to have someone proof it because sometimes charts are mislabeled or, or aren't letter eligible or something. We'll have that ready for tomorrow and go into production tomorrow and have the books ready, hopefully, um, for pickup by Friday morning. But um, this will give you the full overview of where we stand with the 24 budget. And then you'll have, uh, you'll be able to take the books and go through the budgets department by department as you've done in the past. But last year we did it as an overview as well and that seemed to work well and we're gonna try that again this year so that you see where we're coming from and what the important things have been to the town administrator in setting this year's budget. And um, then the finance committee is going to be meeting with uh, department heads that have all been scheduled to go through their individual budgets and then, then they'll make their recommendations to select board and you'll take it from there and, and decide um, you know, whether, you will need, you, whether you need or want additional hearings. So let me uh, get started on this then. On your screen, is uh, that's just our introductory page. This is beginning the FY24 budget. The budget is in two sections. One is the general fund budget. Uh, and the other section will be the enterprise fund budgets, which are the water sewer and Hadley media budgets. So beginning with the general fund budget and with each of the sections, actually, we're going to begin with the revenues uh, that will go through the uh, highlights of the town administrator's recommendations and then show how we're going to balance the budget this year. So we can start with the revenues. Oh, I have the clicker. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm new to this. Oops, there. Okay, so um, it's, I've already been to finance committee and to, to uh, the select board for uh, the, uh, the, uh, the first part of the budget book, which is where do we stand now in the middle of FY23? How are, do our projections measure up to what we were saying about 23 a year ago? And um, we are, I think, with a few little things here and there, pretty much we're on target with where we expected to be. In some ways, we're slightly ahead, particularly in local receipts, just a bit. Um, but it means that we are comfortable in where we're going with the 24 um, projected revenues. So as you can see from your screen, these are the four primary areas of, of revenue uh, which we rely on to balance the general fund budget. The first, uh, first line is the property tax. Um, the figures are shown back to FY20 and the increases going through um, to FY23, which is this year in green, 
uh, what was projected for 23 in the next column is where we actually stand in these categories of revenue. And then we proceed to the 24 projected. And the last column is uh, one that we rely on quite a bit, which is what is the increase that we project for 24 over what was projected for 23. And as I said, we are comfortable with the 23 projections at this point. So we see in each category that the property tax increase is going to be $423,200. State aid, unfortunately, the governor's uh, budget is not completely ready, so we don't have new figures for 24. So the starting point we had to rely on for 24 were the final figures for 23. And we are hoping very much that we'll actually see a, a, an increase um, and certainly don't expect to have a decrease, but um, we don't know until they come out. So using 23's final figures, we actually are a little, up a little bit, 8,221, um, over what was projected a year ago. Uh, that's because, um, as we're hoping this year, uh, the, what we start out with in projections um, is somewhat, uh, is um, sometimes increased as the year goes along and as they move, uh, progress through the budgets in the state, um, at the state house. So uh, our third category, table three, are local receipts. And you can see those have been increasing. Um, going back to COVID-20, they were high, and we were, on a, we were doing pretty well with an increase at that point. 21, they dropped. Uh, and 22, we're back up. And projections for 23 may, uh, may or may not be low. I, I can see that you, you see that our projections for 23 are not as high as what we actually came in with at the end of 22. But um, there's only so much that we can go ahead and, um, and project upwards on. Um, so we're hoping that we'll come higher. Uh, get based on our expectations and what's been taken into year to date, we do expect it to go higher. So th therefore, relying on the information we had, um, and when I say we, I'm talking about we meet uh, with Susan Glowatsky and Dan Zadonik, and Carolyn and I meet to review these from time to time. and, and um, 24 projections then for local receipts are coming in at 3,822, which is a little over $387,000 more than was projected for 23. Linda, can we, do you want us to hold questions or? Yes. If we have a question um, on this one slide. This uh, is, uh, well, I don't know how, I, I don't know. Why don't I, go, go ahead. Why don't, why don't you ask questions okay. as, so as we go along? So the increase from uh, 23 to 24, specifically on local receipts, mm -hmm. is fairly significant. So that's over a 10% mm -hmm. increase. Right. So could you just talk about, is there you know, a new revenue stream in there, or where, where you're projecting the increases? Right. Um, we do have, this is just not going to show up in a uh, PowerPoint, but you will have it in your books, which is the, um, the more detailed uh, itemizations of our revenues. The ones that are coming in um, more, most, significantly, most significantly higher than the year before would be um, meals tax and rooms, and ex, uh, rooms excise tax. Between the two of those, that's a $250,000 increase. Um, we've been doing very well in that area um, over the past few years. Um, we took, between those two, we took in, um, we projected um, Let's see, we, t we took in $1.4 million in 22 and we projected $1.2 million in 23. So we came in, uh, we took in more than we had anticipated for 22. So we did increase uh, 23 somewhat based on 22 projections, but then we took another leap for 23 based on what we have received year to date in 23, because we have two quarters in already. We received them, uh, we received them rooms and meals excise back from the state quarterly, which is the end of September and the end of December. And based on where we already were at that point, um, we see that we're going to come in higher in 23, and we went ahead and raised those projections for 24. Okay. So that's 250,000. Uh, the, um, the other areas, uh, we had some, uh, some increase in inspections um, going up, uh, Board of Health receipts we projected are going up 
because we have more inspections being done there. Yeah, that, that's okay. That's the lion's share of it. I just was okay. All righty. Thank you. I'm okay, just sure. curious it, how much cannabis now that we have the second store open is yeah, making uh, a difference. Cannabis is. Uh, Well, uh, we projected $150,000 for each of 23 and 24. Uh, we may meet that in 23, but we decided we not enough to increase it in 24. So we're still hoping to make that $150,000. We market haven't been in a flood. Pardon? I said the market is too flooded. Uh, n not flooded in Hadley, but we, well. we do feel that impact of what's going on in the other in the towns around us. It's very different when they than when they first came in, but we're going to only have two active ones going. So I hope that well, I, I wish them well. So um, so that brings in between that's our regular interview um, revenue <laughs> comes in a subtotal of those three categories over there shows a change of eight hundred and eighteen thousand dollar increase. There is an enterprise uh, receipts those are the monies that we charge back to the enterprise funds for the town overhead um, and their direct expenses for, for personnel uh, for the line items that the town has and spends on their behalf, such as the benefits for their employees. Um, so that went up about 15,000. Uh, most of that most of that is in the uh, sewer department, and Amy, you had asked about that last week, why that instead of others, and that be, that's because there's been more of a fluctuation in the budget in that department, and, there, and it was really thrown off by a um, encumbrance from one year into the next, so the spending happened in, in an off year. So it's more an evening out, evening out of what happened in sewer than any specific increase. So I'd say when you average it over the uh, last couple of years, all three are staying relatively uh, stable. So um, that's it for the revenues. The bottom line then is that we have 834,000 more projected in revenues this year than we had for last year. And so that is the goal for which to keep the uh, increase in the budgets within. Okay, and here is uh, the recommended budget for all of our, our eight categories of uh, government on the general fund side. The categories on the left, we have the general government side um, area, and then we have public safety, education, public works, human services, culture and recreation, uh, debt payment, uh, and benefits. So if I go right to the bottom line, you see the increase in the budget is 835,000. And uh, sweeping up and see where the increases were, this is probably one of the better balanced uh, increases over the departments than we've seen in a while. Um, we always have a large increase in the benefits side. Um, it's just the way it is with retirement and health insurance benefits. And uh, between the other departments, given their size, it's, it's fairly well distributed. We will be going into more <laughs> this a little bit more later, but I just want to give you that overview that uh, that the bottom line of the budget that Carolyn is recommending does it is a eight hundred and thirty five thousand dollar increase and it's over all departments. There's no a single focus of departments. So you'll be covering the um, where there's significant difference between the the ask and the recommendation from the town administrator. Will you be going over that tonight, Linda, or no? Uh, we will in certain areas. Okay. Um, let's see. I just lost myself here. Okay. Um, I have to way back up. I don't know what happened to me, Jennifer. You just got trigger happy. My little clicker got going here. Okay. Okay. There I am. <laughs> um, okay. So the recommended budget. We might keep my hands off of it. Um, going into how we're going to be balancing it, um, I want to tell you what the free cash balance is. We were, for, were certified at $1.75 million last June. We spent some money at the Fall Town meeting, and so we are going into, uh, after coming out of Fall Town meeting, we had $1.468 million. And so that's what we're going into the annual town meeting with. Because the only time the uh, certified key, free cash is 
adjusted is at town meetings, or at least that we can adjust it, and the only time the state adjusts is, is that once a year when it's certified. So keep in mind that we are starting out with $1.468 million in cash. So how are we balancing the general fund budget then? So despite the increase in both, uh, in both the revenues and the expenditures being fairly even, um, we still have a gap between revenues and, and, um, and expenditures and the budget. So last year, we had a gap of 877,000. This year, we have a gap of about 878,000. And that's consistent with saying that we're moved the revenues and the budget up the same amount. Um, the way we're planning to balance that this year is with 875,000 in free cash and then uh, these two smaller items that we um, have each year. So we do have a balanced budget. Uh, a couple things that I want to say about that then. Uh, if you go back to 20, and this is why we do five years, because we see you know, how have we been doing in the past and how do we compare and what does it mean for where we're going into the future. So if you go back to FY20, which was the last budget that we had without consideration of COVID, we had been progressively over the years before using less and less free cash to balance the budget. We were going in the right direction. Boom, 21 is when we really got hit hard with, um, we got hit with COVID. And so we had quite a shortfall in the revenues. You can see the drop in revenues there between 20 and 21, but the budget remained the same. Uh, we, had a, we had a gap in revenues for that year that had to be made up out of free cash. We didn't even have enough free cash and we were using stabilization. Stabilization was used two years in a row. Going into, starting in 22, we were still experiencing that drop in revenues mostly because of the meals and rooms tax. We had also uh, decided um, as a town, it was voted at a town meeting to not increase real estate taxes that year. But um, honestly, the, the big hit there that we were able to use ARPA funds for was the fact that we had such a large loss in the, the rooms and meals tax. And because of that, we have this line here called ARPA revenue replacement funding. For the 22, we, re we used 579,000 in ARPA funds uh, in the category of revenue replacement. And that's in addition to 463,000 coming out of free cash. So we were able to balance the budget there. So you see there was less of a gap from 21, uh, from, in 22 than in 21, so we start going in the right direction again. But uh, we're not back to where we were in 20. But it's gonna take a little while to recover from that unless we're, uh, and if we're going to keep, uh, be able to meet where the budget is, should be to provide the services we're providing, we're just going to try and work at getting, uh, at closing that gap over time. Uh, okay, then going into 23, we had less of a gap between um, revenues and expenses. Again, we're going in the right direction. For the second year in a row, you say we used $400,000 in ARPA revenue replacement. The good news is it was less than it was the year before. Uh, bad news is, is that that used it up. We can only use it for those two years. Um, for some of the uh, businesses that have been asking, or a lot of people asking, where did, your ARPA, where did your ARPA money go? There you go. I mean, we used it really for everyone in the town. Um, everyone benefited. The businesses and residences, all uh, taxpayers all benefited from not having an increase in tax that year, uh, real estate taxes. And, the, um, and everyone who benefits from the town's budget, from the town's services, from the police, the school, the, um, uh, the other, uh, the town hall. Uh, they all benefited by having the ARPA funds applied to our budget so that we could continue to provide those same services. And not only did we need to continue to provide those services, but as uh, as many of you know who are connected with some of the departments, uh, police, uh, COA, library, those demands actually increased um, as people were um, uh, from, from COVID and going forward. We have seen an increase in use of our services um, in library council on aging and, and all that. So let's see, then going into 23, um, yes, I think I just did go into 23, which shows we are closing the gap a bit. 24, why aren't we closing the gap more is because we are, uh, we're taking this step and funding all of it ourselves out of, we, we, 
We've weaned off of ARPA. We're replacing the funds with our own um, free cash. You remember a lot of free cash, it's not just money that appears, a lot of our free cash was that extra revenue that we received in the prior year that we had not projected receiving. So even though it's free cash being applied to the budget, it's, it's revenue being applied to the budget. It was the revenue from the prior year that we're able to recapture and apply this year. We can't keep doing that indefinitely, but we're still, this is still part of our catch up, our part of our recovery. We can only project increases so much. So we have 875,000 applied out of free cash this year in the budget, which balances it and we're hoping to be able to go forward and, and balance it um, with using a less of free cash as we go forward. All right, so how do we spend that money? And this is where I would like to turn it over to Carolyn because as I tell her, I'm, I'm in the weeds taking care of all the details and she is the one with the overview and, and what we're going to do and, and makes the plans for the budget. So um, right. Carolyn, if you want me to leave that up for a bit while you yeah, talk sure. and then I can, yep. we take it down if you, uh, you want a, Sure, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So thank you, Linda. Thanks for uh, getting that ready. Um, can you guys all hear me okay? I just want to make sure. Um, okay. And thank you very much for your patience letting me be remote. It was definitely helped with my commute. So thank you. Um, so the t if you go to the bottom of the page, the right hand um, section of the page, you're going to see we're going to go bottoms up. Um, so it's the the total increase in the budget is $835,000. And if you go up, you'll see where those expenses are. Um, and what I want to do is I want to show you, if you go up to number one for the town personnel increases, half, half of that 835000 is uh, personnel increases. And, um, and so it's 50-50. 50, 50. 50 is for benefits and 50 is for salary, regular salaries, increases, union negotiations, contracts. Um, but some, there are some other increases in there that I want to go into, and that's really going to be my focus right now, is um, answering that question of, you know, what are these increases, and what what are they going to what what benefit, and what will they provide? Um, and so, as you know, my priority um, for the past two and a half years is definitely identifying identifying the gaps in staffing. And, and services and providing solutions to fill those gaps. And it's, it's, I really think that the, the department heads and the staff have been so good about articulating that and then just us observing it. Um, so my, my, my conservas, concerns are in this budget and how I'm addressing them it really focuses on, uh, number one, that really still not enough adequate admin support to, to address coverage and workload. And what I mean by that is when we have empty offices out of one, uh, only one full-time staff member in a department, that, that's a loss of services. Um, but it's also in, increases the workload of the department head and that support staff who's only there for a few hours. So we're, we're focusing on that. We're, um, I'm focusing on always the health and safety issues that can't be addressed because we're, we have a lack of staffing related to inspections and permitting inspections, uh, health inspections, um, building inspections. Um, so we're addressing that as well. Um, and addressing ongoing maintenance and adequate custodial coverage. And really what my, the last thing that I will be talking about is um, it, it is all, we're just batting this around consistently the past couple of years about how do we support some of our committees that really need some more, um, so, some more uh, skilled uh, support, which is ZBA, um, planning, CPA, and conservation. So I'll, I'll be addressing that. So one of my concerns is uh, I'm going to talk about uh, building maintenance. Um, we have we really need to keep maintaining our older buildings, but definitely our new our newer buildings. And we have one employee. We have Gary in charge of building maintenance, and we outsource 25 and a half custodial hours for 36,000 square feet of town-owned property. That is, it's it's. Re remarkable that we've been able to do it so far, but it's we're not keeping up. We're certainly not keeping up in the library and senior center where we're having um, increased daily increase of, of participation. And those departments, buildings like that, are only getting six hours a week 
of custodial and it, it's we need to, we need to um, definitely step that up a bit. Um, so I'm recommending that the town hire another custodian who can also provide basic maintenance and repair as needed to support Gary. And um, we'll continue with whether we go with outsourcing, but we want to still keep that level of custodian care, custodial services that we already have. So that was um, one of my recommendations. And that's where you'll see some of the increase. Uh, but also the building inspector is requesting a part-time inspector. And I, I absolutely support that. I'm, I'm seeing the, uh, the inability for Tommy to, to do all of the inspections that are required. Ironically, through COVID, that did not slow down. And um, he, is, he is definitely feeling the burden of that. Um, so I want to be able to support that request. Also, the he health inspector. We were very, very fortunate to get uh, Ben as a um, inspector for the part-time um, hours that he provides. But it has become really, really evident that that a health, a part-time health inspector for Hadley, just looking down Route Nine, is not enough. And what's happening is uh, we're all uh, that Ben is also providing more than just health inspections. He's really taking on the whole services of a, of a board of a of a health department that we can't really depend on uh, volunteers to be doing anymore. He's he just got his Title V certification, so he's he's also working in many different situations that aren't just specifically health inspections. So I would like to. Um, my recommendation is to make that increase his hours uh, to full time. But part of that would be taking on um, not only the inspections, but also more director responsibilities. Um, so that's where that increases. Uh, of this? Sure. Yes. So are our Board of Health uh, people receiving a stipend? That will be taken away. That's based on your, your historical uh, policy that when staff uh, is more staff is hired for a department that has uh, stipends that will be taken away. Um, that, that's not going to be across the board right now. And I'll explain that a little later. If I forget, please remind me, Joyce. But yes, Board of Health, that will be taken away. What are the they stipends. getting for stipends right now since their workload has decreased now with um, having a Board of Health inspector? I don't have and that numbers in front of me. Looking to hire another person. So... Who, what would you say? I'm sorry. Another person no. besides no. this No, no, Peter does, Peter does seven to 10 hours of, um, of the admin work and Ben would be, Ben would go from part-time to full-time. Does he do title five? Yes. Okay. He just got certified for that. Yes. He just got certified. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so just as a reminder, both of those positions uh, with the increase in inspections and permitting, would we be increasing revenue, which would help offset some of those increases? Police is adding one officer to address the increased high volume of traffic complaints, crashes, and investigations. Their their workload continues to increase, and um, and I, and I definitely support that. Uh, our ambulance is scheduled to be ready. I'm I'm. I'm very optimistic by the end of May after the training gets completed and we're just finishing up with some of the work on the on the ambulance um, and should be ready to be in service by mid-June. So fire is requesting the additional two firefighters slash EMTs um, as we start to make baby steps getting towards um, more uh, full-time fire department. And Min, was there a question? No? Okay, there are some minimal increases in support hours um, that you'll see in the COA office, the assessor's office, and the clerical office. And that is, uh, it's just, it's, it's ensuring the proper coverage in the departments um, and to balance that workload. Again, very concerned that we have department heads not taking vacation. Um, when, they, when we experienced, we had three departments last, this year and last year that we had unexpected um, health Leave, uh, leaves of absence due to health reasons. And we did, we, we were not adequately in those departments did not have enough support. We pulled through, um, but we, I, I always get nervous with skill sets that there hasn't been enough cross training. So when someone's, when that office is empty, it, do, it does create um, a disruption in service to the residents and an increased workload for the staff that's in there already. 
Um, so, and I do want to recognize that the select board um, uh, recognized the need for more support for me and allowed me so to help allow me to work as more uh, focus more on day-to-day -day operations and dealing with the multiple things that I handle every day um, by adding, um, giving uh, the treasurer, Linda, more responsibilities to assist, to assist with the financial uh, management of budget preparation, capital planning, and just forecasting, analyzing the budget and um, those matters that uh, it really helps having a person focus solely on that, which has it definitely, this has probably been the easiest um, budget cycle that I've gone through in the three years. Um, and then finally, this is this the position that I think since I've been there, been here that has been um, not, not really tossed around. It's definitely been a priority, but but, but the funding hasn't been available. Um, and we've spent some time, the finance team, really looking at the departments that need the help the most, and that would be conservation, the ZBA, um, CPA, and planning. And so I'm proposing that we use some of the funds from those departments that have set aside some clerical assistance, but it's never been enough and never utilized. Um, to look at hiring a land use coordinator. We are without a conservation agent right now. We're in the middle of interviewing. And that is going to be on the back of my mind as we interview some of those candidates to possibly um, uh, go to a full-time position to help those boards. Um, they, they need desperate help. I, I, I worry about them all the time and they, they're feeling overloaded. And I really think that it would help us deal with some situations that we have that we don't have some of the we don't have that support staff to be able to go out and help find solutions. And so that I think that position is extremely important. Um, I'd even like to look at is there a way to make that happen sooner than July 1st, but that is in the my recommendations. So those are the focuses I have. So go ahead, ask, ask some questions. Carolyn, do you want to talk a little bit about what's not in the budget? Uh, it looked like the asks from some of the departments came in much higher than what you're what you're recommending, which makes mm -hmm. sense. So could you just yeah. let us know what's not in there that people may have been looking for? Yeah, so I don't have it right in front. I don't have the breakdown of each budget with me, but I would say I I did the same thing as I did last year. We met, Linda and I met with not only the department heads, but some of the staff who does a lot of the accounting and the, and the looking at bills and what's been paid. And I think um, what we were really looking at was where are we year to date? And if it was a big ask, we would really make a couple assumptions that um, year to date was where it should be. If you were to look at it six more months, would you have enough in your budget? And if I felt that there was uh, the money hadn't been spent um, and it may there may, were many answers or reasons for that there, it could have been it was coming out of another budget. I'm, I'm sorry, another budget line item or mu much of the increases was especially with fuel and utilities and um, supply chain challenges. And I, I we Linda and I chose to address that a little bit differently, I think, instead of. Um, uh, inflating, not inflating, but in, uh, raising those budgets for this for next year. I think we it's still an unknown. What are those increases going to be? Uh, are, are any of these costs going to go down? And we've decided to address that in a different way, and and we can explain that later, um, so that it would just be a something that it might be a reserve fund transfer to to um, beef that up a little bit if we were to overspend in any of those line items that are just unknown estimates right now based on our the last year or two. Um, if it was if it was I did ask them, and I and I went to the select board um, early on in the budget season to say instead of saying level service level funded, can I really ask them what they needed? And so some of them really were asking what they needed, but some of them I think we can do it in a more um, planned approach, to one or two years down the road, and add add staff or. Um, you know, it, it, you know, just looking at any item that could could we not do it all at once, um, like a, a police cruiser or additional staff. So, and I'm I'm sorry, I don't have the budgets right in front of me, but that was my that's the the general process that we went through. Okay.
Anyone else before we go to enterprise funds? All right, Linda. All right. Um, I wonder, there we go. Oh. I have to get you back to okay. the right place. There you go. We have it in front of us. I don't know. This is for the public. Yeah, it's fancy. Right. There, there will be, there are some large categories in, in the general funds uh, of uh, cuts that were made over from recommendations. <laughs> But I have to say, ultimately, when discussing it with each um, department head, they were fine, as Carolyn said, with, with delaying or putting off something. Um, and in the case, um, what you're going to see, and I think, Carolyn, I'm going to, should, should we talk about what's going on in the, with the um, ambulance part of it? Because it was such a large change from the request, is that we are suggesting um, that uh, the increase that was requested for the ambulance fund, um, which is about four, I think it was four to five hundred thousand um, dollars, which really kind of would have swamped the increases that we were looking for across the board. Uh, we've asked uh, to move that. We're going to address that in a special article. Uh, the reason is that it's an unusual amount of money that will probably just be a one-year use of the funds because that fund is to be, it will ultimately be funded out of special revenues. So it's going to need a boost for the first year to get going. We have to expend the money and then the revenues will come in and cover it. But rather than put those amounts into the <coughs> general budget, meaning there's less money to go across the others, we are going to, we're asking that the ambulance budget be funded the first year out of an article, directly out of free cash, and um, at such point in the year where they no longer need it and they're, they're standing on their own, that we'll then be able to adjust that article and going forward spend it out of special revenue. But we just didn't think it was right to, uh, it, it is right to fund that budget, we, we didn't think it was right to, um, to overwhelm the rest of the budget with that. So it's a one-time thing and we're hoping, especially the time is very good because we do have the cash to be able I to support it. I think we always knew that that would happen. Has what? I think we always knew that that mm -hmm. would happen because it's a, how do you get it going without yes. funding it first right. and right. then getting the revenues from it afterwards. Right. So it certainly makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's the possibility of even getting it paid back if we want to at, that, at, at a later point that we keep track of what was spent out of the free cash and we could get that back. But we would never do it to the jeopardy of the program. It would, it would, you know, we would be looking for there to be sufficient uh, revenues in it in order to make that adjustment. So we're just going to have to play that one as it goes. Um, but that's a large part, Molly, of the difference between the request and the Okay, now into the enterprise fund revenues. So I spent a while with the uh, general fund revenues showing the increases from year to year. Uh, to contrast that to what we're seeing with enterprise funds with the sewer increases from year to year. Let's go back to 22. Well, let's go back to 20. It actually went down from 20 to 21, uh, barely up between uh, 20 to 22, S same projected revenues into 23, not, we're about at the right point um, of, for the actual collections. Projections into 24, same amount. What's the change from three, 23 to 24? Zero. Um, same with water. You'll see pretty much the same uh, progression that we're not seeing a, an increase from 23 to 24 in Hadley Media, which relies on a single lump sum that comes at the end of the year based on our usage, and it has been consistently in the low 70s and, um, uh, and, and it's actually been dropping. So that's, that's going to be an, an issue. So let's go and see what's happening with the budgets. Next with the enterprise fund budgets. Just like all the other budgets in town, these budgets are increasing each year. I mean, how can they not? They've got employees, they've got expenses, they've got uh, every, uh, supplies, they've got, they've got everything as anyone else, those budgets are gonna go up each year. Um, 
So you'll see in the sewer department, for example, the increase from 23 to 24 is 60,000. It's almost 200,000 in the water department, and it's 1,000 in Hadley Media. Maybe those don't seem as high as you think, but if you look over the requested column, you can see to get to those figures, to get to that low an increase, was quite a bit of, of uh, a change in request. Now, part of that is we're still dealing with, in those departments, how much are we spending on capital within the operation? We're still kind of settling out operational versus uh, infrastructure versus capital and, and other items. How many projects go in as part of the budget? What projects qualify for going on capital? Historically, I think a lot more has been in the, uh, those operational budgets um, perhaps then we realized, I don't know if, if that's the way it should be handled, but we're, I, I, like, as I say, with a new director, this is in our second year of trying to work that out. So. In, any wind out there of a retirement in sewer as there had been, and I don't think we actually had replaced that first one. I don't think we replaced Mr. Pipchinski, is that correct? Um, we did. Peter? Peter? Mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, is it Peter? So whether mm -hmm. we're replacing? Yeah, Peter, the, it didn't I don't know his position yeah. as sewer, head sewer operator, was he was replaced by Peter Clough? Clough? Clough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can't talk about people individually. So I'm no, no, I know. Yeah. That's okay. I just wondered if that position by attrition, we were able to hire people at a lower rate than with the well, previous. Well, I think that, that happens. Um, in departments, and then others, others, you end up spending more when you get a person in because you're pulling them in. You're you're buying their experience. They don't necessarily come in at the bottom rung. Mm -hmm. um, not every position actually can be filled with someone at the bottom. We really need to get the the licensing and, and the qualifications mm -hmm. at a higher level. So I don't know that it's always true, but it, it mm -hmm. could be. And and um, okay, we certainly can look more into that. So moving ahead into how we're balancing those, just as with the regular, uh, the general fund, we're balancing out of free cash. We have been, in order to balance the, uh, make up for the difference between the revenues being flat and the budgets increasing, we've been using general funds. Where are we starting right now? I mean, we've been using the reserve funds. At this point in time, we, are, we have the certificate, certified dates of, of June 30th and the amounts that were spent at Fall Town Meeting bringing those balances down. The one uh, that's on the, the lowest end here is the Hadley Media balance. And then you see we've got 255,000 in sewer. We've got a little more flexibility in water for now, but they're all going in the same direction. So here we are with uh, the last four years of what's been going on between revenues and expenditures in those departments. We start with sewer. So uh, revenues are the top line, expenditures are, are the second line, and the third line is what's the difference. If it's a negative balance, we need to fund it out of reserves, and the reserves is the, uh, the highlighted yellow line all the way across. We needed to fund sewer out of reserves in 20, quite a bit more in 22. We're projected to use it in 23 and we're projecting more in 24. And again, these are the, with the reduced budgets from what was requested. The total amount that has been spent out of reserve accounts in uh, sewer are 395,000 over the last four years. You bet, uh, go down, going down to water, the same progression. Uh, as you see, they're a few years behind because they're starting with a larger balance and because it's a healthier ac account. Everybody pays water bills, fewer people pay the sewer. Um, and. There are times, however, there and their trucks are just as expensive. Uh, we've got it, it's a larger it's a larger budget. The budget's one point. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a large. It's a larger budget. Doesn't look at in twenty. I'm a little confused there, but uh, yes, it's generally a larger budget. Uh, so as I say, we have got more wiggle room there. However, as you see, going in twenty three, twenty four, we're going in that same direction. Uh, for the twenty three projected uh, budget, when we're in right now. We are going to have to use uh, 57,000 from free cash. Uh, I'm sorry, not from uh, water reserves, and in the current year, 250,000. So over the same period of time, we have just over 300,000 being used out of reserves. Uh, why don't I go back one slide here, and you'll see again what those balances are. Look at sewer in particular. It's got 255,000 now going into 
into uh, the 24 budget, which is calling for use of 122. We're going to knock that right down. Um, I think um, th that's this, this is not the intention of the reserves accounts. Those are um, when the uh, revenues are exceed expenditures, that's, that money goes into the reserve account and stays there. Um, and it is intended to be spent on capital. And you know they have a lot of capital needs. We saw that at the fall town meeting um, that those departments need to have a lot of equipment. And um, the reserve account is a good source for that, whether, it's, uh, whether the reserves are going to be used for actually outright buying this equipment or paying the uh, debt service on uh, equipment being bought over a longer term. Either way, this is uh, not going in the direction we would like to um, We'd like to see it at, at this point. What else have I got? And this is the Hadley Media, where, I'm, uh, where we've got a similar picture going on. Uh, what's going on there is the staffing is incru uh, is, uh, has increased over time. They, um, their visibility is increasing. They're covering the games. They're doing a lot more. Uh, they're buying equipment, uh, as you saw from that flat reserves. However, it's just, it's just going down, and um, we have used almost a, an entire year's worth of a budget coming out of the reserve funds. And that's not going to go on for much, be able to go on for much longer either. And um, so to talk about then, let me go back to the, whew, the budgets, or maybe we just get the screen down. Carolyn, you want to uh, go ahead on and talk about philosophy and the plan on the sewer? Well, I, I think you presented it really well. There is an alarming trend that's going and it's not it's not sustainable. Um, really, a lot of it, I'm just going to be echoing what Linda said. I, I mean, a big chunk of my day is dealing with infrastructure needs that are coming up and just trying to figure out how we're going to fund them. And, it, and we, we've got to build up that capital. Um, it, that's, it's never going to go away, the infrastructure needs, because it's a, we have so much older infrastructure. Um, so I, we just need to maintain those funds and, um, I think we'll be addressing some of it in, in, in the next part of this meeting, but it, 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 uh, it's, it's a little alarming. Can I just ask a question about debt service? Mm -hmm. So the debt service that's in the budgets for water sewer in, in general, is that line, um, that line item derived from strictly existing debt that's on the books, or is there any room for additional borrowing in there? Well, there's room for additional borrowing if we have more money to pay it from. I mean, we, so um, it, the, what has increased on those lines for 24 is based on everything that's been approved so far. Um, which is through the fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we had a large, bar large borrowing um, uh, plan at the fall town meeting. We hope that um, as far as those kinds of items that we are cleared for a while. And as represented at that meeting, we've had a number of vehicles that are on hold and they're not going to be borrowed this year. So they're not reflected in the 24 budget, yet they're in the plan, they're in the long-term plan. Um, the um, we are going to be having to do a bond in the next year or maybe in two years, especially, you know, we've got CPA borrowing that is uh, already on the books too that we haven't actually done. So we're going to be looking at a bond of three or four million dollars. What happens when we go into a bond is we take some of these items that um, are paid off in a short half that we have scheduled to pay off, be paid off in a shorter period of time, meaning the debt service is higher in, in our next few years, and we will be spreading them out over a longer period of time, if that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So of course, we'll reevaluate at the time. Um, but so far, yes, everything we have uh, voted to borrow is in the plan, but not everything that we have voted is in the 24 budget, because we're, not bar we're borrowing them in 20, we're not going to be borrowing them in 23. We pay off debt a whole year after we do the borrowing. So, uh, we, so we can expect those figures to grow within the budget. And that's going to be, that's certainly one of the factors that uh, accounts for the increase from 23 to 24 and will again from 24 to five. So 
where do we want to go from here, Carolyn? I'm all set. Any th more questions on the budget? No, were you going to answer that question that I had? You said to bring it back up again about the stipends. Board of Health. Board of Health. Oh, okay. So that's going back before Enterprise. Sorry. Thank you, Joyce. Um, so one of the tra transitions, if, if I just go back to that land use coordinator, um, there is uh, some stipends there through that transition period. And you know that I, I think the level of work that some of those boards is doing we're still going to need to keep some of that in place during that transition plan with the ultimate goal of taking that stipend away. That's where I was saying some of the some of it would not be immediate just because a staff person was hired. I think Board of Health, they now have an admin position as well as a health inspector who was moving to full time. Commissioners or not? No, that's they're, a bylaw. They're elected. They're elected. Okay. So once, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, obviously there's going to be a tremendous amount of detail in the budget books mm -hmm. when we get them, uh, whether it's electronic or hard copy. But so as we go through that, if we have questions, of would course. you like us to send like an email to Linda and Carolyn for if we have any questions, would it go to both of you? I'm just from a protocol standpoint, what would you like? Uh, that's fine. It's um, it, on, and actually, if you, if you want anyone to any department head to come in to answer some of those questions, I can start off without answering those. But if you wanted more detail, we could absolutely bring some of those. The bigger departments, I would be thinking you would have questions about. But I, I am fine, Linda. I don't I don't care if it goes to both of us and whatever's. Where are you, Amy, on the finance committee? Where are they? Where are you all on this budget now? Have you met with departments, or you started not started that process yet? We we did start the process. Uh, we met with so far. Count, um, we met with the library. Um, we met with let's see, uh, veterans. Veterans, uh, yes. But there's and only just a couple, I think. Okay. What was that, Andy? 500s and 600s. Yeah. yeah. We didn't meet very many. Um, we're okay. waiting for the book. Um, so. The book. The book. The book. <laughs> and then. Oh, and the book. <laughs> but you're scheduled. Yes, but we're <laughs> scheduled. We have a schedule out. Okay. So we tried to get it all done so that we had everything done before April. So March, we we're going to be done. Now, one of the questions you mentioned, what should I do with questions? Well, if you ask questions, maybe you want to send it or CC us because if you have a question, well, that might be a question that we might have too. <laughs> and we so, can always well, watch your meetings too. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. but I, I, I mean, I think sometimes we don't think of all the questions. So if you had a question and it would be something we might be interested in asking that same question. I mean, it's just um, sometimes we don't think of it, so. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah, their agendas uh, say which departments are meeting with each time. Yes. And um, I think you've got one next, they pick up again next week, Wednesday or we Thursday. We were doing, um, yeah, I think we were going to do in March uh, mostly Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. We had Mondays and Thursdays on the books. And you have DPW next week? In two. That's one of the big ones. March 2nd is your next meeting. March 2nd is the next meeting. Thank you. Right. On to water and sewer. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, thank you thank very you much. Thank you. And Carolyn. So we finished and with water and sewer, sewer and so we can go right in. Sue, do you want me just to start it right off? Yeah. We can just dive right in. <laughs> um, so we put together some numbers for you uh, to actually find what rate was needed um, based on expenditures. Um, this year, uh, the 
FY24 town administrator's uh, proposed budget is 1,131,172. Um, I took uh, revenue figures from the A2s that we filed with the Department of Revenue. Um, so we would reduce that by other departmental revenues and uh, investment income to come up with total expenditures of 903,695. If you divide that by the amount of revenue that was uh, confirmed by the A2 in 22, uh, and this is just user fees, uh, you come up with a 15.5% rate need. Uh, what we are recommending is a three-year rate increase, and for sewer, it needs to be front-end loaded um, because we have 255,000 in reserves left. Uh, and so we need to stabilize um, the sewer budget and then hope for um, less rainy summers than we've had, quite honestly. So when you say it's front end loaded, do you have that breakout? The 15 are recommended increase of 15, 5, and 5. So if you if scroll you, down a little bit. Yep. Oh, I see. Sorry. If yeah. you use the <laughs> pointer, you can show them. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Right, right Where here. I? <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> the bolded recommended three-year rate increase, 15, 5, and 5. Um, so oh. what our rate structure would look like uh, is in the next chart below. Um, residential sewer is always billed at um, one rate for all usage. Um, commercial is broken out between a commercial basic and a commercial conservation rate. Um, and you can see the rates where they currently are and where they need to go. When was the last, can you give me a history over the last number of years of our rate increases for sewer? Sure. Thank you. Uh, we've had one mm -hmm. uh, since 2007. So we've just been putting this off. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. I, you can go back and watch all of the meetings. There were split votes all over the place. Over the there place. were, you know, uh, we can't, we can't possibly. But there were um, disagreements between who should bear the burden of the sewer, whether it should strictly be the sewer users or should there be a general, um, because everybody benefits from Route Nine, you know. So there was conversation about perhaps uh, it should be spread. Differently. Well, that's um, how the ten dollar fee got attached. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That led to the ten dollar fee. And Which the last was happy about. Uh, actually, it all began when we started chlorinating the water. Um, there were several select board members who were very vocal about they would not increase rates until we got our water back to yep. the standard it was. Yep. And unfortunately, good or bad water, it costs the same to pump it out of the ground. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we were mandated by DEP to exactly. coordinate. Exactly. Yeah. So we didn't, ha our hands were tied at that point. Yeah. So. Um, the next chart down is a cost Im impact by category. I did a single person, a single family, uh, small commercial, and large commercial. And as you can see, the large commercial gets hit the hardest. Um, it ends up being about a, a little bit over a thousand dollar difference uh, over a three year period. Um, this particular large commercial is a hotel um, and the impact is about five rooms per quarter uh, at an average room charge of $200. So, But they're the biggest users of the sewer with, they are. The, with the rooms that are you know, being used. Right. They have, they have income to offset the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're in a similar position as the town. If their expenses go up, they have to figure out how to cover it, which would mean they're going to do what we're going to do, is increase their rates or however they get their funding. Exactly. Thank you. 
water. so if we go over to our rate need for water that comes out to a uh, twenty three point two nine percent increase and what we're recommending is a three year rate increase of twelve percent six and six and discontinuing the residential low use rate um, the then you can see the rate structure there. Um, so if we discontinue the zero to 499, um, the second category would be zero to 4125. Um, will these increases, uh, it's gonna be asked of us, so I might as well ask it now. Sure. Will this get rid of the $10 fee? Not yet. Not yet. This well, includes the ten dollar fee. And why wouldn't we get rid of it if we're increasing it by twelve or fifteen percent on water and sewer? I because, mean I'm gonna be asked this, so yeah. I'm I'm on an answer, so you know, you well, know and you know our, people. It will it, the infrastructure fee is going towards our debt service. This is operational costs only. So Okay, debt. And so I'm sorry, can I <clears throat> just wanna make sure I understand that cost impact by category? Sure. So the current column um, so the large commercial, three thousand two hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Yep. And so that three thousand two sixty-nine is going to go up by four hundred dollars to three thousand six sixty-two. Are right? you on? Are you on the sewer or the water? I'm on the water. Sorry. <coughs> okay, three ninety-six. It will go up to four ninety-eight <coughs> over a three-year period. That's sewer. We're looking at total at the cost impact soon down at the bottom the last uh, chart. And those numbers there. don't coincide with what we're thinking, or our math, basically. If if you're raising if you're raising the rate in year one by 0.75, it doesn't look like that number has gone up that much from the large commercial. 0.75. Where are you getting the 0.75? Rate increase, that's what it's going to be per. Am I not reading it? Well, isn't there like, aren't they blended or something too? Yeah, they're tiered rates. Yeah, they're tiered rates. So the math isn't. Okay. But what I'm asking is, are, are we saying that for 59,300 cubic feet of water, that hotel, you said it's a yep. hotel, is paying $3,268.97 Per quarter, per, except per quarter. Yep. And then their quarterly bill is going to go to three thousand six sixty-two. Yep. So basically, it's four hundred dollars times four. So it's a sixteen hundred dollar increase for a large hotel. Yep. Divided by, to Randy's point, if they're passing it on. It's still. Every room can. Every room. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. And I'm not minimizing the increase. I'm just wanting to understand it. So. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's not an easy increase at all. But, uh, you know, the last time water rates were increased uh, was May, of, May 15th of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time, you increased the water rates by 2.5%. You know, I, I wish we could have done two and a half percent over a number of years. <laughs> it would have made things easier would on been, people. Yes, it would have. Closer. Well, it was yes, the it sewer that needed it more than the water. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but at least it But nobody wanted family. to put the people on sewer with a larger rate, even though they're the ones that benefit from it, and mm -hmm. they're not the ones, like myself, and I yeah. can say, that have um, septic system right. that now the pumping has cost per quarter has mm -hmm. gone up also. If you do it once a year yeah. or every two years, if you let it go, it's shame on you, but you, you know, you need to do it mm -hmm. at least every two years, at least, and it's well over $300 now to pump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the other thing to consider is we're not the only town in this situation. No. It's um, in the paper today. 54% for East Hampton over three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Hatfield, um, they increased uh, their sewer rate from 934 to 1027, a 10% increase this year, and next year they're increasing it by 17%. So 
So water, same thing. 10% next uh, this year, 17% next year. So they're not front loading. No, they're not. We're, we're in a situation with the sewer. If we don't do anything in two years, we'll have zero reserves. So I or agree that maybe we sooner. Need to do something a bit more drastic in order to bring the revenues up. Right. If there's a pipe that breaks for sewer, we're up Schitt's Creek. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> well, I think, you know, this board really has to has to look at what our predecessors have done and it's try right. and correct these errors and get the town back on a, a level playing field for where we need to be. Yeah, yeah. there's no silver bullet here. So, um, And so the next step then would be to schedule the hearing? The hearing is already scheduled yeah. for next week, March 1st. Oh, it's already on the schedule. At yeah, this great. meeting. Hmm? It will be part of this meeting. Yes, it'll be part of the next select yes. board meeting on yes, March 1st yes. at 6.30 p.m. is when it's published. Okay. Okay. Great. Good luck, Joyce. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Looks like I have a full agenda next week. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's when Jane leaves. That's all right. I've gone. Oh. Nice, nice planning, Jane. <laughs> okay. But I vote increase. Do we vote on the increase at the meeting next week? Yes. Yes. You absolutely will be on the block. So you do have a consent agenda? I have a consent agenda. And um, Carolyn also wanted to address something else. But she's We muted. weren't supposed to tonight. No, no, no. Oh, uh, the consent agenda is just a, some the warrants. consent agenda is some warrants. We should all be happy about more warrants. Mm -hmm. So uh, the consent agenda is AP2333, AP2332, AP2332S. We've signed those. Thank you very much. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? And roll, a roll call. call. Roll call vote. Chungalo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. yes. Thank you. All right, and we have the warrant on here for the annual town meeting. But isn't that next week that we close that? This is just for our information. Yes, Randy had Randy had asked, even if I had just placeholders, so this is where we're at. It is definitely a draft, and there's lots of yellow highlights and red um, font. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you had that. We have time to look at it before next. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> You're All right, welcome, thank you. Randy. <laughs> Carolyn, you had something you wanted to say? That was it. Any announcements? Not tonight. I wasn't planning on it. All right. Roast beef dinner. Take it away. March 19th, 3 in the afternoon, $25 at the Senior Center being cooked by the Legion. Famous chefs. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote, Chungalo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. Amy, hey, do the you finance committee would like to adjourn? You have to adjourn. Oh, I'd like to adjourn. <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn. Yes, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. Technically, roll call vote. Uh -oh. Fiden? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Klopaki? Yes. Thank you.